Leave it 5 one turn right heading 180. one four Papa, turn right 245, report localised established 27. Welcome to a continuation of an existing series here on the channel, focusing on aircraft within the aviation industry. Today, it's the Airbus A350. I'll go into what it is, what makes it unique, how customers have reacted and more. So sit back, relax, fasten your seatbelts, and why not subscribe if you like what you see in this video. To really introduce the Airbus A350, we need to track back to the start of the new century, all the way back in 2004. One of the main reasons why we sit here today with the Airbus A350 flying is actually thanks to the brilliant Boeing 787, which was introduced prior. The Boeing 787 is similar to the A350 in many ways. However, one crucial thing about it was its ability to essentially move customers away from the prospect of quad jets and towards the 787, the first true next generation plane. Airbus originally, if you are unaware, didn't see the Boeing 787s as a threat to their business model. On numerous cases, it can be proved that Airbus believed the 787 would strictly compete with the A330. In fact, if anything, Boeing strictly to them built the 787 to compete with the A330 rather than also slot into a whole new sector, if you will, that would rise above that of the A330. The Airbus A330 being one of the many derivatives of the A300 program that was launched and first seen in the 1970s. However, as 2004 progressed, Airbus continued to receive strong amounts of push from customers, analysts and more within the company with regards to building a totally new airliner that would battle against the 787 and allow customers another alternative. This especially came as the Boeing 787 started to thrive and many people quickly realised that it wasn't just going to compete with the A330, more widely a whole new area. By the end of 2004, Airbus began to put in motion their A350 series, and on the 13th of June 2005 at the Paris Air Show, Qatar Airways initially said that they'd placed an order for a total of 60 aircraft, the beginning of a successful but also problematic decade, in addition also orders that are still continuing now. With a development cost of 3.5 billion euros, originally the A350 was set to seat 250 to 300 passengers. Something Airbus really wanted to do was differentiate it from the A330 so as to give customers a reason to order it. As an aircraft manufacturer, the absolute last thing you want to do is put all the time and money into building a new plane, only for an existing one to do all the jobs that this new one does and have all the features that it has. Airbus worked on their A350 so it could coexist with the A330, not just within their portfolio of aircraft that they were offering customers, but also with carriers potentially already flying the A330 series. By the time it launched, Airbus had an A350-800 option and an A350-900 option, with the Dash 800 initially seating 253 passengers typically and flying 16,300 kilometres, while the Dash 900 would fly 13,900 kilometres and seat roughly 300 passengers. Eventually, though, Airbus scrapped the A350-800 with the progression, development and launch of the A330neo, a re-engined and adjusted aircraft based off the highly popular A330CO that I've been talking about in this video throughout. The A350-800 never hit the ground running and was simply too close to that of the A330neo to continue with it. But there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the problems surrounding the Airbus A350 in the mid-2000s. The aircraft actually underwent a major redesign which saw a brand new fuselage installed that was wider and allowed for a new low density premium economy seating configuration as well as a high density one. Airbus really wanted to please customer expectations of their new wide body jet and felt that their previous version of the A350 simply wasn't up to standard and was not going to attract as much interest as this new one. Following the various changes, and there were more than I just mentioned before, the Airbus A350 XWB, which is as it's known today, was born, XWB being extra wide body. Days after the redesign was announced, Airbus actually welcomed on a brand new order, and the XWB was set to compete now with the 777-200 and the 787-9. With the various changes, and it also further appealed to customers, which was a huge, huge win for Airbus as it would secure their future with the aircraft for the long term. However, with changes come additional costs that maybe Airbus was not originally expecting to include in the program's development. Development costs did rise a staggering 2 billion euros, almost doubling the original cost it took to develop the Airbus A350 prior to, as mentioned, the new fuselage and, of course, the other additions. 
So the A350's design is a crucial part of it, especially if you're unaware of the aircraft type and you're just simply stumbling upon this type of video for the very first time and you have no prior knowledge. So the engines that are featured are the Trent XWBs from Rolls-Royce who agreed early days to actually supply the engines for the type. However, something that continued through the design phases was the idea that Airbus didn't believe what Boeing was doing with the 787 series was the right decision. However, with time, on numerous occasions, they adjusted their way of thinking. Airbus also continued to take a look at key aspects of their other aircraft when it came to building the A350. While they didn't necessarily say copy every single aspect, they definitely took inspiration for that of the likes of the A380 and the A330 and also more. The airframe of the A350 is actually made up of 53% carbon fibre. This has helped create the carbon fibre livery which will be featured on your screen now. This is a special livery that features on the A350 test aircraft and also display aircraft. On top of this there's 19% aluminium and finally 14% titanium. Aircraft manufacturers throughout the years have continued to look to better improve the design and make their aircraft lighter, more efficient so they can fly longer and so on, and be more appealing of course to customers worldwide. As the years continued, Airbus secured more and more orders and it quickly became one of the most popular alongside the A320 family for the aircraft manufacturer. Production rates increased and in addition they began to build new production facilities to further aid them with delivering the A350 to the masses. Last year alone, Airbus delivered over 100 aircraft to customers around the globe. With their A350s and now the introduction of the A350-1000s being produced at a consistent rate. Unfortunately though, with the emergence of the global pandemic, Airbus did cut production on their A350s and in turn, deliveries were slowed as well. However, it still to this day remains a very popular aircraft within the Airbus portfolio and is the number one option when it comes to long haul operations for the aircraft that Airbus do offer their customers in that sector. As we know, the Airbus A380's production is slowing now and is about to cease completely. That program, while of course it will still be flying with Emirates and other airlines, is essentially over for Airbus. Now they move on to working out what the future will hold, whether it will be the Airbus A350 or something completely different. To date though, the A350 has around 1,000 total orders and so far they've delivered 400 at the time of recording. Each year the deliveries have certainly risen, bar however a few years, and it's been evident how stagnant it's been this year. With that being said, Airbus should still be somewhat pleased with the result of the aircraft given orders still at the very least are rising with each year, as customers want new planes. So far it looks like the orders and production will continue which is always a big benefit in any sense for any aircraft. However, like I mentioned, Airbus will indeed be studying new options for the future to continue to better please customers for what they want for their long haul operations, especially in a world when this pandemic ceases. I'll be continuing this series with other aircraft if you enjoyed this video, so be sure to stay tuned for more on the channel, and I hope you enjoyed the content featured here on the channel in the coming week as I try some different things. Thanks as always for your support, even when things get a little trying, like now. If you have any thoughts on the A350, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below. Stay safe as always, and take care please. I'll see you all in the next video.